It's a great honor uh, for me to participate in this uh, summit today. And I just want to review some points that we've already heard and I think we'll hear throughout the summit, that there's a large body of evidence that supports the value of investing in childhood stimulation and nurturing, especially for disadvantaged children. There are numerous rigorous empirical studies, including those that have been mentioned, the Perry Preschool Program, the ABC Darien Program, as well as a raft of recent studies that have been mentioned as well. I would put on the table a body of evidence that supports this and supports the fact that if we look at how successful families perform, how they contribute to the developing lives of their children, we see that both from the studies of family influence and from the studies of interventions, that there is a real value to the economy of investing in the human capital of children from birth to five. So this gathering shows that policymakers, business leaders, and philanthropists are now embracing, embracing this evidence-based wisdom of investing in early childhood programs. And I just want to briefly review the evidence and a guideline for the future. So the evidence does provide clear guides for action. First of all, I think now we've come to recognize that American policy is recognizing the power of the accident of birth. A child does not choose the family that he or she is born into. But society now, we understand, can enrich the opportunities that disadvantaged children have, and they can allow these children to flourish. And we can do this by understanding the parenting and supplementing the parenting resources available to children and scaffolding their lives by giving them the kind of nurturing and stimulating environments that are available to children from more advantaged families. <coughs> society and the programs launched by these initiatives has to recognize that good parenting is really what it's all about. It's paramount to life success. Without doubt, the family is the greatest contributor to the success of children and to the upward social and economic mobility. And without doubt, in many quarters of our society, the American family is under great stress. The way that parents interact with their children, the amount of time they spend with them, the resources available to provide intellectual and social stimulation greatly affect the children's potential for leading flourishing lives. The evidence shows dramatic differences in achievement test scores and in social character, social emotional skills for children from very different economic and social groups. Children of college educated mothers achieve at a far greater rate than children whose mothers have a high school degree or even less or high school dropouts. And we know that these gaps emerge long before children enter school. So 20 years ago, the development psychologists Hart and Risley showed that achievement gaps were substantial as early as age three. And so in a disadvantaged family, a relatively less advantaged family, I should say, a typical child would hear roughly in an hour maybe 600 words. By contrast, the same, in the same hour, a child from a professional family would hear over 2,100 words. And that would lead to a gap in the word knowledge at age three, long before uh, school begins, of 500 words for disadvantaged children that they would knowledge cumulative vocabulary would know and versus 1,100 word cumulative vocabulary possessed by children from a professional family. And these early inequality and basic skills tend to persist throughout life and lead to economic and social inequality. So taking the long view, Americans can most effectively address inequality in the larger society with a strategy of pre-distribution by enriching the parenting resources for young children in disadvantaged environments, and not as effectively by redistribution of income to adults. Child disadvantage is not properly measured by lack of money to the parents of children. Unconditional income transfers to poor families are not nearly as effective as is a strategy for enriching the early nurturing environments available to young children that promote a child's physical, mental, and social development. Investments that bolster these, bolster these capacities are the most effective way to promote social mobility and to encourage a, a life of, uh, of achievement and accomplishment. And we know from a number of studies that these have high payoffs economically and socially. So early investments are important simply because of the dynamics of skill formation. Preschool has a positive effect in promoting skills, and we know that those skills are very important and that gaps emerge at age three. Recent research also documents that multiple skills are important for success in life. For too long, the conventional wisdom in education and policy circles has been to measure success in education and in preschool simply by achievement tests or by the ability of students to show up on a, on a measured academic uh, performance at some stage in their life. 
And yet what we understand is that in, when early childhood interventions were judged solely by the success in boosting IQ, that in many cases they failed. But what we've understood and come to understand is the much richer set of skills that are required for success in life and what successful preschools are building. For many tasks in life and in the economy, social and emotional skills, character skills are important and more important really in some cases than these pure cognitive skills that receive so much attention. So impulse, uh, grit, uh, persistence, uh, impulse control, self-awareness and sociability can be taught at very early ages and these have enormous payoffs. And they lead to, to many, many dimensions of improvement over the life cycle, including higher wages, healthier lifestyles, less participation in crime and engagement in a variety of socially productive activities. And so as I said, essential elements for success for early childhood include engaged supporting parents and early health, nutrition, and learning. We should not underestimate the role of the parent and the power that comes from providing parents with information, resources, and choice. Ensuring that parents have this knowledge and give a stimulating home environment is just as important as anything that happens in a classroom when children are in school later in life. And this is where home visiting programs and other efforts to productively engage the parent in the life of the child come into play. And many of the successful programs have worked exactly on that dimension of life. What's been amazing has been the recent evidence that's shown that early childhood programs, which have normally been thought to look only at improving cognition, have had substantial effects in promoting adult health. So we can see, for example, at age 35, when you look at the children, the ABC Darien study randomly assigned it to what was initially designed as a program to improve the cognitive skills of the children, those children essentially ended up uh, with much lower levels of uh, high blood pressure, of, of blood pressure, much less hypertension, much less symptom for diabetes, less obesity, and in many dimensions were successful on dimensions of health. And so these are important dimensions to understand. So that a program that was designed to boost IQ, in fact, worked by boosting both the cognitive and social and emotional skills and had effects across all aspects of life performance. So the evidence shows that it's much more effective, as the Sheriff Martin was saying earlier, that there's much more evidence now to think about reduction in crime, uh, improvement in health, and the return that have been estimated, $8 per unit dollar invested, 7 to 10 percent per annum rates of return, suggests that there's a very strong uh, economic case for investing. So quality early childhood programs to disadvantaged children are not entitlements or bottomless wells for social spending. They are not government boondoggles. The investments we make today in disadvantaged young children promote social mobility, they create opportunity, they foster a vibrant, healthy, and inclusive society. And investing in this, as we heard earlier, and I think we should hear more throughout the day, is really a bipartisan strategy. It's really a strategy that appeals to Americans across all economic, social, and partisan lines. It promotes family values. It strengthens the American family by offering voluntary programs that enrich the lives of children. And it fosters social inclusion, the productivity of the American workforce, and creates a healthier society for all. So thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to a very active day.